Hey, Dr. Gottlieb, I think it's hard sometimes to, to really get our heads around and quantify just how far and how, how far our lives have changed and how rapidly. Uh, 400,000 cases in the United States. I think today is April 8th. On March 5th, there were 11 cases in the United States. Um, just how quickly this has ramped up, how quickly our lives have changed as a result. Where, where do you think we'll be a month from now? Well, I think we'll be in much better shape. Uh, if you look at Italy today, uh, Italy's clearly coming down their epidemic curve. The number of cases that they reported yesterday is lower than the number of cases that they reported right before they instituted the lockdown in that country. Now, the crude fatality rate's 12 percent, so it's taken a tragic toll on Italy. I don't think that our fatality rate's going to get that high, but it's going to continue to go up here in the United States as well. Cases will continue to climb over the next couple of weeks before they start to plateau nationally and start to come down. New York's clearly turning a corner. I think New York's going to plateau over the course of this week and start to decline in terms of the number of new cases next week. And that's the whole tri-state area. Now, the southeast is going to continue to increase. States like Louisiana and Florida now have big epidemics underway. Florida has 15,000 cases. Louisiana has 16,000 as of yesterday. That'll continue to go up before it comes down. And other parts of the nation now are going to lead the national epidemic. But the whole country is going to be coming out of this towards the end of the month and will be in better shape. It gets back to what Joe was saying, how do we get to a steady state where we can suppress this infection enough that it, people feel comfortable going out again? Because there's always going to be cases of this circulating. We need to get it to low enough levels and we need to have the systems in place to identify it that people feel confident that their risk of contracting it is very low. Hey, doctor, uh, maybe to bring this conversation back to where it began, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about privacy and how you see this whole system ultimately working in the future. I know you talked about the testing that's going to be required, but how much in terms of our daily life do you think it's going to change um, what we're willing to hand over, if you will, about our own privacy? And when, if we haven't started that conversation already, which it sounds like we haven't, uh, when we're going to need to? Yeah, well, you know, we've, we we um, discussed the idea in a paper we put out on, on the testing um, sort of framework that we need, the idea of using cell phone apps to enforce self-isolation. Basically, right. when people have the infection, um, you, can, you can enforce under a public health order, you can enforce a self-isolation. You can tell them they have to stay at home for a week or two. Traditionally, that's done with caseworkers. Sometimes it's done with police. You can also do it with a, a cell phone app, basically ask people to check in, text the symptoms, uh, and and basically identify their location. That's very different than what China's done uh, or South Korea, where they're using cell phone apps to, to track people and see if they come in proximity with someone who might have had the infection. I don't think we're going to do that. I don't think we should do that. That's an invasion of privacy. I think there'd be a lot of discomfort. But we're going to need to get comfortable with the idea that when someone has infection, is actively infected and can transmit that infection, we're going to have to ask them to stay at home for a period of time till they're no longer contagious. If we don't do that, then we're not going to have any case-based interventions. We're basically not going to have any ability to prevent this from spreading in the population. We're going to have to go back to these population-based interventions. So, you know, part of what I was hearing on Twitter was people now feel uncomfortable with the idea of telling someone they have to stay at home when they have the infection. Um, the alternative is to tell an entire population they have to stay at home, and I think that's, that's very intrusive. So I think we need to get comfortable with the idea that when people are identified as being actively, actively infected, we're going to have to have a way to say, well, you have to stay at home for a week or two until you are no longer contagious. But, that's, but, but doctor, that means that we're going to have, doctor, just so we're clear, you're going to have to identify those, or those people have to self-identify, put themselves effectively on an app on a voluntary basis, and then, some, and, and, then, and then the medical community is going to track them? I mean, that's what's going to ultimately have to happen, right? According to what you're talking about? Well, that's what happened. If, well, if you think about what happened before we had the epidemic, we had cases in the U.S. We had hundreds of cases. And initially, they were doing these case-based interventions where they would identify people, including travelers right, coming right. from outside the U.S. They would, in some cases, put them in forced quarantines. And they'd enforce it either by putting them on a military base or having police check in with them. So we're not going to be able to do that. There's going to be too many people infected. And so the question is, can we enforce self-isolations? Can we tell people when they're identified as having the infection that they have to stay at home? Uh, the only way to do that is with technology, because we're not going to have enough caseworkers to check in on folks who have the infection, or just let them roam around and accept the fact that there's going to be outbreaks in cities, and you'll have to you know, sort of enforce population-based restrictions on cities when you identify those outbreaks. I think it's preferable to go to those case-based interventions where we have very aggressive testing. We identify the cases. When we identify those cases, we tell people, you have to stay at home for a period of a week or two until you're no longer contagious, uh, and you'll get the medical care that you need. 
If we don't do that, then we're going to be back at square one, which is where we are right now, because we're not going to be able to control this.